That's a great shirt. Look at us. Look at us wearing band shirts. Look at I got a brand new Van Halen shirt. Better. This is look at White Snake. Wow, that might be alluding to something here. Who knows? Okay. But my goodness, man, I have become a Van Halenite. Oh really? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm saying, well, look at the, here. Look at the shirt. Okay. That's so awesome. My wife got me this for my birthday. She got me uh, the Van Halen book. The uh, what was that book called? Uh, Van Halen Rising. Rising. Yeah. yeah. Uh, how a Southern California backyard party band saved heavy metal. We both agree they're not heavy metal. However, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what I've turned into, man. I, I love it. Been loving the music. That we. What's your favorite Van Halen record? I mean, women and children first. Fan fantastic. I mean, it's a fantastic album. However, somebody get me a doctor might be my favorite Van Halen tune of all time. Really. Yeah, from Van Halen mm -hmm. too. Love it. You should cover that song and call it Somebody Get Me a Dentist. <laughs> Based on your little debacle, your little uh, bourbon yeah. glass debacle. Right. If you'd like to go back and uh, check out what would that have been, <laughs> episode five, uh, you'll get the full story of that. Can you, can you reenact that? Uh, yeah, sure. We'll do that. that. Careful. <laughs> Jesus. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's a fake tooth. It's a cap. So it doesn't matter anymore. All right. Oh. Eh? Is that the key of G? That, I think that it is. Yeah. So your t shirt, Brent, has alluded yes. to potentially. What this episode is all about. We left our listeners, our viewers, listeners, yes. please. We left our viewers in a bit of limbo here, but that is a great shirt. And what does that shirt say? It says White Snake. Ah. This is David Coverdale's band that he started after he left Deep Purple in March of 1976, I believe it was. Right. So because of that, we felt it might be fitting for us to move on to. Slide it in, okay. Like White Snake, which yeah. is technically what their fourth album as White Snake, sixth, I believe. <laughs> See, yeah. two albums. Yeah. Well, it, it's kind of muddy because first of all, there's the UK US thing, right? And I'll talk a little bit about that later. But um, he Coverdale released. It used to be White Space Snake, right? So it was like, and then it was David Coverdale's White Snake. And then it was just White Snake. So he released um, an album called North Winds, but it, it was kind of more David Coverdale than White Snake. It was a lot of stuff like that. But um, this record, Slide It In, was is believed to be the sixth White Snake record, and in my very humble opinion, the best White Snake record. And that's why I propose that you listen to it on this show. Yeah, well, getting well, like prior to this, we were very bluesy, right? It was very much yes. more like a blues rock. So this was sort of like mm -hmm. the first time that they were getting into the the hard rock genre yeah. of the eighties. Yes, yeah, uh, and that wasn't an accident. So um, the previous records, they you know they didn't really do that well. So it was mm -hmm. like I mean they 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 did well in in Europe and Japan and the UK. Uh, they were solid, but they did not reap financial rewards for David Coverdale. And by the time um, an album called Ready and Willing came out, um, which it, I don't know which which one that was, but um, they were ready to pack it in. It was 1981. And then Saints and Sinners came out and uh, it did OK in 1982. And then uh, Coverdale kind of set his sights on the U.S., in Canada, North America, and wrote, um, went, got to, got to writing, um, slide it in. But the cool thing about this record is that there are two distinct versions, hmm. two very separate versions of this album. Do you know that? No, I, I did the, not. No. Yeah, the UK version and the US version. Oh, interesting. See, Coverdale was very good at watching the landscape and what was, you know, what was kind of happening at the time. Um, and he anticipated heavy metal was getting popular. He was watching the scene. Uh, so with Slide It In, he knew that he had to really kind of make an impact in terms of, you know, the hard rock scene and, and less the blues scene now. Uh, 
And it's funny because those previous records were anything but like Deep Purple. He, he really wanted to kind of get away from Deep Purple and do the blues thing. And we talked a bit mistreated, right, on the Deep Purple show. Um, and that was kind of his like signature, you know, song. And the previous White Sink records were, you know, in the vein of mistreated until Slided In was recorded. And it was a lot more kind of heavy and, you know, kind of in the in the vein of what was going on um, in contemporary times in the U.S. and in Europe. Um, so anyway, Eddie Kramer does not gel with the band. He's fired. Martin Birch comes in, Iron Maiden's producer and others that work with Deep Purple, I believe. Uh, but the record sounds flat. So John Kladner, do you remember John Kladner? I sure do. Back from our Aerosmiths mm-hmm. series. Yes. So John Kalodner worked with Geffen and Geffen was uh, White Snake's record label at that time. They had just signed them for Slide It In. And so Kalodner says the mix is really flat and um, we need to bring somebody else in. So they brought in a guy named Keith Olson and mixed it, remixed it for the U.S. market, meaning they uh, took the keyboards down, they took the bass down and they brought up the guitars and they brought up the drums for the U.S. market. So it was a separate album and they resequenced the songs. So like Gambler, for example, on the U.S. Uh, album appears uh, track number five, I believe, on the U.K. release is track number one. So a lot of differences. So there are two distinct versions of this record. Out there, which is kind of cool. What was the track that we had talked about being the, uh, the throwaway track? Was that track nine, I think? Yeah, so what, what, the, 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 the second last track on the record. The second last track on the record. So with, yeah. with regards to this album, yeah, track nine is where the gambler should have lived. Oh, <laughs> that's like one of my favorite songs from that record. You know what, man? Okay, I but, totally okay. get it because like we've had these back and forths. People get it. I'm not a fair warning fan. I don't like round and round. You know, it's right, like. Right. <laughs> so so what, what don't you like about it? This is just, this was a. Uh, in comparison to the rest of the album, this song does not set up the rest of what this album I feel like is. Okay. So like you just, you just move slide it into track one. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you, you, you've, you've slid into this album perfectly. Right. But it just, it was like, it was kind of an interesting beginning, yep. you know, kind of like the mysterious, keys are cool, right? yeah, a little ominous. Yeah. Yep. And then, you know, it gets into it and it's just this, it's just this melody and these sounds. I'm just like, what am I listening? What did Brent give me to listen to here? Like, oh, yeah. you know, am I going to like White Snake? you know, beyond here I go again on my own, you know, mm. beyond that. Right. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you, I do. So okay. Gambler is just not a song wow. for me. Really, the, the, see the drumming, Cozy Powell, and I'm a big Ian Pace fan, as you know, right? right? Based on the chat we had about Burn. Yeah. But Cozy Powell is a heavy style drummer, right? Plays very hard. He's almost like a John Bonham type. Okay. Um, and that's why he was brought in. I love those. They're, they're so simple, the fills that he does, because it's mostly snare. They're simple, but they're so effective to me. And I find myself like, like air drumming, right? Like, you know, I'm like, like you drive and it's like, you, you're kind of on the, on the steering wheel. Well, yeah. I mean, you know what? Like, it feels like eye of the tiger. Okay. That's what it feels like. All right. Like, so I know, like, so funny. Like I, and you know what? I totally feel that. And I love that. This is the difference between you and I is like, I'm listening to the song and I'm like, you know, melodies and like, you know, how is mm. it, you know, majors and minors and like, not that you don't, but you're kind of like the drumming, the guitar, like the fills. And I love that differentiation between us because now we'll go back and like, listen to it for that yeah. reason. But, um, but for now, this song is, uh, it's a, it's a good track nine. <laughs> wow. No, I like, I like that. We completely disagree. Like yeah. I'm, I'm kind of mystified by that because but you're you know, okay. This I, kicks it off. You're okay. This is the opening to no, the album. No, no. Okay. See, right. this is the UK version on the UK version. Gambler kicks off the record. Right. But in the U S slide it in, but it's not even like one or two got kind of, you know, switched. Like it got completely rearranged. Eh? It, it absolutely did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Which and I, I feel I, like that's gotta be Geffen, right? Is that Geffen and Claudner or is that Geffen yeah. sort of like, yeah, both of them like that. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense. These guys know. Yeah. 
these guys know sequencing, they know hits and, uh, and, and, and I'll be know honest, the US market. Yeah. And they know the U S market. And I got to tell you like the rest of this album is a ton of fun. Like this yes. is okay, good. a super fun album because slide it and follows it up. And I'm like, like, this yep. is uh this like yes why didn't this kick it off i would have been so much more excited for this album if if this song like kicked it off you know like it's yeah. just, uh yeah, it's a ton of fun you know it's totally like i don't know it's just totally marketable right obviously but oh, it's yeah. like for the time you know everything about these songs on these album like i could just picture Brent with long hair and oh, like yeah. maybe like a bandana and a jean jacket no. or a leather jacket. No, yes. bandana. okay. A leather jacket maybe. And yeah. like, <laughs> you know, just getting amped up and, and, and any, a white snake pen. Yeah. Right. And any dude <laughs> during that time is listening to white snake. Like this is, oh. this is my anthem. You know, like these are, these are my, my songs. Like religiously. Yeah. And I, ha I had the vinyl and for your benefit, because in a previous episode, you, you gave me a hard time of it. Um, well, Do you I, have it's, it? it's not all good news. Oh. Um, I found a couple things for you. I was digging in my, like all my CDs are in a box because I just don't play them anymore, but I can't bring myself to, to part with them. I don't want to. Yeah. And again, I was looking before the show, I was looking through and, and looking and going, Oh shit, I forgot I had this. Like, I, I just can't get rid of them ever. I probably will in fact die with my CDs. I found this cool thing. It's um, white snake. It's like a weird kind of Japanese or European release where it combines two albums on one release and it's um, North winds, right? So David Coverdale North winds and then white snake come and get it, which came out, I believe like four albums later. I don't know why they put these two together on one, but what they would do is they would do like ready and willing and love hunter, which I also have, but I couldn't find it. I looked for slide it in. I know I have the CD. I couldn't find it. I also found this. Can you guess what it is? You'll never guess. Deep purple burn. Uh, no. Hmm. Dun, 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 oh, dun, dun, get your dun, wings. Dun. Nice. I've been yeah. listening to that so much lately. I know. I love it. Yeah. So awesome. Thanks for bringing all, those out, man. Oh, no problem. All the Aerosmith CDs are back there. That's I so cool. It. Oh yeah. Love, love Aerosmith. So slide it in, you know, you get a ton of fun. It's very clearly sexual. I love, I love the end of the right to the top, baby. Such a Coverdale thing oh, God, to yeah. do. Because because yeah. I went back and listened to some other uh other albums and under on uh uh, Saints and Sinners is that the previous previous album? Yes, it is. He does it on Young Blood, and he says, "I'm gonna make you mine." Oh yeah, loves <laughs> like, like the solo spotlight, right? Oh, of course, oh, he loves yeah. himself. So yeah. it's loves uh... <laughs> acapella, loves to sing on his own. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, see, but you know what? I, I that that sword cuts both ways because at the end of Love Ain't No Stranger, I've always loved this ever since I was 15 years old. Which is the first time I heard this record. He says, I ain't no stranger. You know that part? And it's fucking perfect. Like it's perfect for the end of that song. Right. And I would like listen for that, that moment and just be like, Oh, mm. there's a lot in that out in this album. Like when you listen to like next song is, is standing in the shadow, which <laughs> could have been is standing. That... Sorry. Can I just clarify like what, what, and this might be confusing for you, but there are a lot of versions of this record. So what they did, yeah. what is you, what, what's your source? Like Spotify is it? Spotify. So I believe this is the UK version. Okay. But there, you see, that's weird because the UK version was slided in slow and easy, loving a stranger. Okay. Give so me more time. So it's not it's just a random. It's not. Right? See, this is another sequencing. I see it. That's what I mean. This album, Coverdale screwed around with this so much because a lot of the lead guitar um, pieces were re-recorded. A lot of the instrumentation, as a matter of fact, was re-recorded based on what I heard on Spotify. Because if you look, there's a super deluxe thing that came out in 2019. And there's all sorts of permutations of the slide it in record. And there's him talking on it, um, describing the songs and, and there's demos and all kinds of cool stuff. I, I love I love the fact that like they kept out of love on the song title, standing in the shadow of love, you know, because they've got, uh, you know, love ain't no stranger, hungry for love, guilty of love. So they probably were like, there's standing in the shadow of love. Maybe we should cut out the of love. 
there's a lot of love in the titles on this album. <laughs> did, I, did I ever tell you about that, that game I used to play when I was in high school with this album? And university. <laughs> and you tend to so, say love, you got to take a shot or something? Yeah, that's oh, yeah. exactly what it was. <laughs> that's hilarious. So, so we would start the record on side one, and it was a cassette. So we would, we would hit play, and every time we heard the word love, we would take a drink. And like literally by the end of side one, like it was a challenge to get to the cassette recorder and like turn the tape over. <laughs> of course. <laughs> love, the word love is like everywhere on this album. Totally. Somebody get David Coverdale some, <laughs> some love for goodness sake. <laughs> he needs love. But you know what? I, 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 I loved this record. Like I, would, I listened to this. You know, I think about records I listened to in, in high school. This was probably, you know, in the top five. Dude, it I'm got t- played so much. I I I listened to it a ton leading oh, up to good. it. I listened to it a ton. I had a lot of fun listening to this. This so was I thought, like I thought you were gonna hate it. Oh, really? <laughs> no, yeah, I, I had a blast. And it's funny, yeah. like, even like because like my brother-in-law is a big fan of this t- this era of music. So when I told yeah. him that I was listening to Slide It In by White Snake, he was like, What an album. He's like, he's like, I got maybe 10 CDs. This is one of them. And, uh, and I was listening to it with my, my wife or her, her brother-in-law is, is uh, or her brother is my brother-in-law, obviously. And uh, she's like, I could just picture him like getting ready, like to go out listening to this music. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, it's so good. So oh, good. Like, and, and like standing in the shadow is such like, it's again, it's such an anthem. And it's so like, I love the way that it shifts from slide it in to standing in the shadow of love. Like it's like the way that the kind of shifts with this music is is very cool see this is how important sequencing is yeah. because on the u.s and canada version in 1984 or i think it came out a little bit later march 85 um the album kicked off a slide it in right and the the the, al- the 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 first song on any record is very important whether or not you you skip it or, or not it just it's the lead off it's the introduction to the album i happen to like it um but it's like a one, two punch again, almost because it goes right into slow and easy, which is like the centerpiece of the record practically. Right. Yes. So yes. those two songs are interconnected for me. Interesting. And I couldn't imagine, you know, not hearing slow and easy after I hear slide it in. Wow. And, you know, to that point, um, loving no stranger following that, like I just, those three songs just cannot be without each other for me. Wow. And for you, that means nothing. I just, I think that's so hilarious. Yeah, no. And you know what? I totally, I totally feel like the feeling of that, like this, the songs that follow each other, that it like, that has a meaning as well. Like it's, it's just insane what music does, you know, just in general, you know, the fact that you can feel like it brings you back those three songs played one after the other takes yeah. you back to a time and a place like and it, it has the power to do that, you know, and, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I, just, I just love the fact that, you, you know, you have those, those feelings with these. Cause I do too, with some songs, of course I'm on the spot, so I can't think of them, but I know that when I probably would listen to a Billy talent uh, album, I'd be like, yes. Like, you know, I remember this when I was probably what 13 or something like, you know, just these things that like, you're like, you like, what do you mean? No, there's no way you can't it would sequence this way for a reason. Like, because it's going to, it's sequenced this way to make me remember and feel back when I would listen to this album. So I've got no problem really with where the se- this is sequenced aside from the gambler or gambler being at the top. But um, as according to what I listened to, give me more time came after standing in the shadow and, okay. and give me more time is another great tune. Like yes. just, just fun. It did. I will say it reminded me of highway to hell by ACDC. Oh, really? That riff. Banana. Ba-na-na, ba-na-na. like it goes down a step there, as a, but there are so many of those though on this record there there are right? some there's some there's a song i can't remember which one remind me foreigner like there's yeah but there's it's very, it, 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 that's what i like about it it's recorded very in a very spare method like like back in black almost mm. right because i mean at the time uh well the first recording i think had two guitar players on it but then when they did the u.s version they added john sykes so okay. what coverdale did i don't want to start slinging mud but like coverdale was very shrewd in terms of like switching out his band members you know? 45 different band members 46 50 75 80 you could no it's just like 
lots around this band, man. There's so much that happens around White Snake. To to my like current knowledge, it's just insane. I'm ambivalent because I love the music, and this, you know, I, I say this about a couple of records, but this one came to me at just the right time. You know, I was 15, and it just had everything that I was looking for. I was just like, you know, it was perfect for a kid my age because you're just kind of really looking for those stronger sensations. You're getting into girls and, you know, white snake took a lot of stick for these lyrics, you know, because they're obviously very sexually subjective. Well, when I found out that slide it in, wasn't about a USB key that, that kind of, that was interesting to me. So yeah, you're waiting to slide that joke in. Oh, you were waiting to slide that. Oh, yeah. Anyways, sorry. I totally to threw off. Okay. Yeah. Look at us. We're having too much, too much fun. Loving No Stranger follows up Give Me More Time. Love. And uh, what a great tune. What a fantastic song. Just again, there's like all of these songs are so anthemic. Coverdale's vocals are perfect. The backing vocals, everything that accompanies it. Like there's so much good about this, about this album, man. And it's funny that it's like, you know, you, th- you think about like those classic albums that are like, you know, you think about classic like Led Zeppelin albums, or you think about classic Rolling Stones album, but like you don't think about this in my, well, obviously I don't because I'm just learning of it now. I don't think about White Snake having a classic album, but when I go through this, I'm like, this is like so good even now, you know, to, to go and listen to that. How could it not have been just just the soundtrack to so many 15 year old boys like or even girls lives at the time this is a like hallelujah moment for me this is uh white snake in my opinion their best offering and i threw it out there because i thought it would be a good kind of follow-up to burn based on you know our, our chat about david coverdale but i'm so thrilled that yeah. you like this record as much as you do, because, you know, in terms of like quality and sophistication, all that, like the, you, people are going to throw rocks at it saying it's dumb and it's, it's of course. Hair, hair metal and all but that. But I can see that. that too. I can see that listening to this. I can see people listening to this going like, there's nothing intricate about it. There's nothing that's super like, you know, uh, right. profound about any of exactly. it. It's, like, it's not, no, that's not its purpose. That's exactly, see, see that, that in itself is profound. What you just said, that is not its purpose. You have to, you have to enjoy this record for what it is. You know, it's not stairway to heaven, right? But that's the beauty in it. That's not a, that's not a dig. There's beauty in that. Slow and easy starts off slide two based on the, the album that I have. Uh, Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It feel, feels good to me. I think it's a great <laughs> side to open it personally. Yeah, uh, actually, it is. You know, it does work, right? It, it does, man. What it's just one tune, man. Like this is this is like again another like thing. Like you just uh, see hundreds, thousands of people just pumping their fists in the air for a, so another good. sexual song. It yes. is just. Uh, Have you seen the uh, album cover for this record? Slide it in. Oh yeah, they had a snake going down the the yes. chest. Yeah, okay. That's the original. That's the original version. And the cool thing about this re-release, or not re-release, but the super deluxe release, is that they actually showed the model's face. Oh, interesting. And I, I, it was you know, like I said, I I was fifteen. It was eighty four. So thirty five years later, I finally got to find out what this woman looked like. And you know who she looks like? Tony Katane. Interesting. Who, because mm-hmm. who, she was Coverdale's wife after this record, she was. Yep, 1987. I think they got together. What what music did she? She stood in for music video, right? Because they were supposed to have Claudia yeah, Schiffer. Here I go again. It was here I go again. Like that's, okay. that, that's what she's most known for. Interesting. Yeah, I also, but I also heard on that with that album cover based on that 35th anniversary release is that the model fainted while the snake was going down her chest. <laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> No, no. I apparently, didn't know that. apparently, as the snake went down, apparently they put it around her neck, and it started to go down between into, between into her dress. Yeah, and apparently she fainted, so they cut it off here because her no. ass started rolling back. That's what Coverdale says. Are you serious? I'm serious? Yeah, she fainted. She's like, I can't. I... <laughs> Look at the, the. There's a new photo, and it shows her face. The snake is not like on her chest; it's on her shoulder now. 
Oh, and okay. they showed okay. her entire face. Well, the yeah. one the one where it's going down her chest. Apparently, she fainted, so that's why they cut it off there. And then and then they showed the next on this part of that 35th anniversary. It's like her back. It's they use a back, but it's just a different model. It's not the same one. Are you kidding? No, I knew nothing about any of this. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. They, used a, they used a as David Coverdell said, a back model, and she's no a very way. nice back. <laughs> yeah. Of course, of course, she did. Spit it out follows up slow and easy. Love. See, that's another one. A lot of these are very, um, again, the spare recording. There's a guitar, drums, bass, and Coverdale. Right? It's very simple. There's keys too, but you can sometimes not often hear them, but awesome. Like spare. I love all the space between the instruments. And if you listen through a good system, you can hear everything very clearly, you know, and you can almost imagine that they occupy different spaces. Again, I love I love hearing your take on this because I think the song is terrible, and I think like again, this is yeah, I think this song and and Gambler have no place on this album personally. Oh yeah, I feel, oh, yeah. I, I get it thematically, sure, but this is a, this is this is a nothing song to me on an album full of like really awesome anthems. So here, here's my take on on this entire record. Okay. One second, Brent. I should just sure. say that. No, it doesn't all have to be anthems, but this song to me, it just, ah, just felt like filler. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's sorry. absolutely fair. And it, it's kind of uh, lends itself to what I was going to say. So for this record, my opinion of this record, if I, if I, I look at it on the whole, uh, the first three songs for me, again, the U S mix or the U S uh, release, um, slide it in slow and easy, love ain't no stranger, uh, plus gambler as an aside, right? So you've got four to 10. The other six songs are just kind of, it's like, they're just one big song for me. I can't really differentiate them from each other. They sound very similar. I like them all. I don't love them all, but they're just there and they comprise the slide it in kind of rest of the record. And they're point just to make though. It's a good, it's a good point to make though, that a lot of them kind of do sound like the, the same, similar. right. Yeah. And like, but it's sort of like ACDC, right? Like a lot of yeah. ACDC sounds the same. And this is why I got into later on, like I got into airborne and I know that airborne is essentially ACDC, but like yeah, I love it to a T I loved airborne like when they came out with their whatever i don't know if they came out more than one album but like their first album was like it's just a ton of fun and you know just to, that's what this album is it's like it's you're gonna get a lot of the same and to me that was okay i i like it a lot but the standouts are those four songs that i mentioned and then the other ones like i said just kind of you could you could meld those into one song really because i think that they're just versions of the same um and they just constitute the rest of the record for me it's the only two songs i don't like are gambler and spit it out for this album like these these songs gambler man like honestly uh, yeah, this, no. so you, can, you can skip it of course it well so this is the biggest disparity that we've had in how many episodes we've done now like 10 well, this is show number well 10. last episode deep purple's burn was was like i i'm not going to listen to burn i don't need to listen to all of burn again i could listen to some um, but like but we kind of generally agreed on things there well maybe not um but this is like i love gambler like i'll skip to gambler it's, it's a cool message you know it's like i've been a gambler for a thousand years a victim of circumstances. yeah <laughs> so, like, like, and, he, and he sings the, the cool thing too is that if you sing along with it he sings in two registers right he he sings it because he's got a very like deep voice i love coverdale's and, voice i love it so, like so do i you know oh, and yeah. again separate the artist from the art like i love his voice always yes. have you know, he's not a shrieker. He doesn't, he's not an Axl Rose. He doesn't go up to the falsettos, mm. but he just got like this amazing, you know, it's, it's no, it's a, it is a fantastic voice and perfect for this music. Mm -hmm. uh, it was good for deep purple, but Coverdale was made for, for white snake. Like that's what he yeah. was made for. Well, white snake was made for Coverdale. Look at you. Perfect. <laughs> 
great album man thanks thank you for making this a one-off like for us oh, to listen good. to this, was, this so was a ton of fun like good i'm gonna keep listening to this um my son has been a big fan of like i've been listening to this i've listened to aerosmith i messaged you earlier lord of the thighs is Love a it. big fan yeah. of my son and but really he cool. is also very much been into white snake oh good and like and like the riffs and like just so much of it man so uh thank you again oh, for another God. great great record i'm sorry that i couldn't say i don't like it so we could have a real good back and forth i'm sure we'll get there i'm sure we'll have an album where we both disagree on oh. on uh or we you agree i agree disagree whatever so i'm looking forward to that but man this was a ton of fun we're gonna take a, a bit of a break here though and yes. uh, and allow people to enjoy their their holiday season and yes. uh i tell you what that we're gonna be we're gonna be showing some 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 cool like best ofs of the, each cool. episode so if you want to check it out we're going to be back following week and the week after with a couple of best of episodes where we're going to show you some of our favorite moments from episodes we put out to date and uh we're going to take a couple weeks off i think and we will yeah. be back in the new year with, with a pretty big band i think do you want to give it away i don't know if i want to give it away I don't Should know if I want to give it away. Let's, let's give it a surprise. You want to give us, I'm, I'm totally down for that, but we will, but we will be back like, and we'll, we'll let you know, obviously we, you know, we put our posts out a few, few days beforehand, but we will let you know what we'll be listening to a few days before you, uh, or at least one day before we release the episode. So yes. looking forward to that. Aside from that, Brent, like enjoy your holiday season, my Thank friend. You. And you, and you, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, all those things. Absolutely, yeah. And here's to you, Alex, and those like you. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Oh, we doing this? Oh, boy. Oh, Look my God. Did, didn't... <laughs> you've, been, you've been doing that for years. I've been doing that for weeks. I didn't, I didn't really take a big drink. You didn't. No. That's That's my problem. I have I have no filter. I have no what is it filter or is Somebody it? Somebody get me a dentist. <laughs> I might actually need a doctor. Keep that. Keep that. <laughs> Until twenty twenty two, my friends. All right. And a better year. Take a take take a care, man. Enjoy yourself. You too, Brett. Be careful. All right. <laughs>